Air bubbles are one of the main things we have to be aware of and avoid when doing mold making and casting of any kind. In casting, we see bubbles inside of our finished products or on the surface of our castings in the form of a missing spot. When it comes to air in silicone molds, it's actually the opposite. Any air bubbles against our master will leave us with a void in our mold. That means whenever we cast in that mold, our castings will have little bumps and imperfections where the material filled those voids. But that's not the only way air can impact our silicone mold. If we're going to use pressure when doing our castings, then we'll also need to remove any air that may be living within the walls of our mold. The increased pressure will compress the air bubbles within the walls, slightly distorting our mold shape. This can change the dimensions and features of our castings. A critical step to avoid both these air bubble issues is to degas our silicone. Degassing is the process of removing air in our freshly mixed material through the use of a vacuum and vacuum chamber. With our material inside our chamber, the attached vacuum draws out all the air. That includes the air trapped within our mixed material. We can see this happening as the silicone begins to rise up our container while the bubbles become larger as they're drawn to the surface. Once the vast majority of air has been removed, we can take our material out, pour it into our mold, and then rely on the remaining open time and excellent release properties of our materials to take us the rest of the way there. Although it's ideal for us to degas our silicone every time, it's not necessarily required. If we're not using pressure when casting, then any air within the mold walls won't affect our part. If we are careful in our pouring and avoid bubbles contacting our master, then we won't have any surface voids either. A critical factor to consider is how big or tall our mold design is. If our mold is shallow, then the air only needs to travel up a short distance to reach the surface and release. If our mold is larger, then any air towards the bottom has a much longer distance to travel. That longer distance may be too far for the air to move within the remaining work time of our material.